the Indo-European people. The Indo-European people, which are parallel to all shamanic people, and uh, it evolved into the Vedas and the science and theory. Mm -hmm. But they started as rituals and practices of uh, nomadic people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have a sense in the West that spirituality is very otherworldly, sort of separate from our day-to-day -day practical experience. But as, as you explore the Sanskrit tradition, in particular its tantric origins, there is a different sense, uh, a, a sense of oneness, of, of our, our sensuality and our spirituality uh, really coming together, as, as you expressed earlier in the very word, devas. Yes, God is approached through nature. Just as in the, uh, the Hebrew Kabbalah, the uh, Ein Sof, uh, the God is approached through the Shekinah. Mm -hmm who approach to the Malkuth, the, the nature. Mm -hmm. So one gets to God through nature, and one gets to nature through God. Uh -huh. Now you've done something very interesting here, and I know you're a scholar of many traditions as well as Sanskrit. By bringing in the Hebrew, I think it's useful to point out to our viewers that when it, when it comes to human culture, there are many different streams Hebrew, the Sanskrit, perhaps the Chinese, the a metaphor. Polynesian, the American the Indian, American Indian, the African. That Mayan. linguistically they're quite separate, but yet in terms of of the sense of the the world, one might say that they all have their origins in a, in a kind of common human culture, which we might describe as shamanic. Yes, they're based on experience. The raw native experience of any person where he comes from the the home and the hearth and the field and the hunt uh, lead to our metaphysics and all these forms of metaphysics are isomorphic mm -hmm. isomorphic meaning the same form mm -hmm. they have the the same form they're uh, different ways of saying the same thing and and yet uh, they, they appear quite different superficially, but they all reduce down to experience. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very interesting as we're exploring the Sanskrit tradition. What you're saying here is, is that although it d doesn't share much history with the Hebrew tradition or the Polynesian tradition, wh when you begin exploring it in its depth, it's the same. We come to the same thing, yes. Mm -hmm. The Vedic way is a nice way to do it because it is so thoroughly developed. Mm -hmm. But one can do it in Polynesia just as well. Yeah. Well, we're going to be exploring some of the practical aspects of the Sanskrit tradition. In part two of this program, we'll be looking at the Yoga Sutras in particular, where we have a very specific, detailed, step-by-step -step instruction for achieving the kind of insights. Dean, thank you for being with me. And thank you for being with us.